Hello, everybody. Welcome to the final Literally Dead Book Club live show of the year. It's a little bit early for me, so I'll try to I'll try to handle this well. <laughs> um, what did I want to say? Okay. Um, first, I want to ask you if you read it or you didn't read it. There's a moon emoji if you want to leave it in the comments, or a skull emoji if you didn't, or if you DNF'd it, that's fine too. Um, I'm actually also going to put a poll in the comments so you can tell me what you thought of this because I thought I had a good idea of what people's opinions were but I'm thinking now it might be like a vocal minority so we'll see um, what everybody thought we've got a good amount of people here already I'm gonna have Brie introduce herself um, I normally ask I don't know like your your channel um, maybe like what you're currently doing on your channel if you want to promote anything I know you hate being put on the spot to promote yourself yeah. <laughs> <laughs> any any um, recent favorite <laughs> Go ahead, take the floor. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, my name is Bree. I have a channel called Lock Booktician. Um, I do a lot of weird things. The other day I just realized I'm not really a booktuber because I don't talk about really the books that I read a lot. Um, but I, I do be reading, y'all. I do. I just forget to talk about them on my booktube channel, um, but I do talk about them. So there's a little mix there. Um, right now I'm currently doing Vlogmas. I'm very proud of myself, all 24, 25, something like that. I did a lot of filming and I did a bulk filming on one day and then I edited it all and got it all uploaded and scheduled the next week. So my content for December is done, thank God. I gotta do that, but I'm doing like some cool stuff for Vlogmas every day, so you can go over there. Um, uh, I host a Black Aweenathon, which is a registered trademark for um, like spooky stuff that Black people write for the most part. That's what it boils down to. Um, I don't know how many times I've been in the Literally Dead book club. I think this is your, I think this probably solidifies you as the most recurring guest because. Brie will just be in the chat of a, a reading sprint and I'll be like, hey, want to pop on the live show for this book club? And then she just yeah. says yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know how long I've been here, but I love going to book clubs. <laughs> I know. I was going to say, like, it's not me. It's like that. It's a you thing because I yeah. see you everywhere. I feel like every other day something pops up in my subscription from someone else's channel and you're in the show. I, I love a book club. I do. I love being invited to a book club um, because it's like, Sometimes I feel like I'll read a book and I'll be like, damn, who do I talk to about it? Like, and you can talk on your camera, you know, but I just, and you know, on a vlog or whatever, but I'll be wanting the response to what I say, yeah. if that makes sense. So, but yeah, so um, I don't know any, any other thing to promote of me. Well, I asked favorite thriller, but you just put out for Vlogmas a two-part video of your favorite thrillers of the year. So maybe yeah. we can just direct people that way so they have a reason to like check those out thoroughly and get your thriller recommendations. Oh, yes. It's 11 <laughs> mystery and thrillers. Of That would have been my, like, some that I really liked of 2023. So part one and part two. Don't know what day of Vlogmas that was. But... <laughs> There's a couple a couple days ago, I think. I haven't watched yeah. it yet because I feel like I can consider that your favorites list of the year and I'll be watching that for a booktuber favorites video. Oh yeah, because I was going to try to do a separate one and I said, you know, that was done. That was done for me. But next year, I'm going to try to track my DNFs because oh. I DNF a lot. I probably DNF like a hundred books a year. No. Yeah. But I never track it and I forget about like it's it's no thoughts. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm done. I'm on to the next. So I I need to because I was watching someone talk about DNFing books and I forgot I DNF the final strife. Uh I DNF Iron Flame with one sentence. I was like, <laughs> So, <laughs> it's just like forget. That'd be a great vlogmas video, actually, of the, yeah, the list. I, I'm gonna to track it next year. Well, did you DNF any of my book club picks of the year? <laughs> almost DNF the one we're reading. <laughs> we're talking about today. <laughs> Hold on. And then Riley Sager, I was fighting for my life. I was like, <laughs> this for Kayla? Should I? And I said, I can't. I can't. I can't do it. But I've read most of them. 
since this is our last live show of the year, I thought I would just ask everybody, like, how many books did you read from the book club? So if you want to answer me that um, while we tell you what we read this month. So it's Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. Um, I did not prepare a synopsis for this. Um, I was preparing for it just in case you put me on the spot. Oh, my God. I love that. Take it away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> This is a story of a young girl in the deep south of Louisiana. Um, I think the town is called Backwoods, but I don't know. It's giving Backwoods. It's giving uh, middle of nowhere. It's giving Bayou country. It's giving uh, you take one step and you're dead because there's so many things out there in the wild that's ready to take you out. So this young girl, she is in like, I'm going to say it's a cult of Christianity because that's what it was giving. She's in this cult of Christianity that has taken the whole town by storm. I'm talking about Stormiana. So while she is in this cult, the head of this cult or this sector of Christianity is her father. And her father and her mother are very strict and they are very much into the traditional gender roles, but on steroids. So she grows up being very sheltered and also experiencing and seeing very awful things. And one day she um, jumps off the porch, as we say it in, in the South. She jumps off the porch, which means like, you know, she got matured or was growing mm -hmm. up. And um, when she jumped off the porch, she meets this guy. And she thinks, you know, everything is all good in the neighborhood. Then something goes down and another character comes in and he kind of do the Captain save a situation. And he goes ahead and save her and then they create this bond. And this bond is, is pretty much unbreakable. Everybody is like, why is this girl who is the, the daughter of this very prominent man in the neighborhood, why is she with this... uh? outcasts essentially so you go through the story figuring out or trying to figure out what happened in their relationship you're trying to figure out what's going on with these dead bodies that just keep popping up mm -hmm. um and you're just confused for the ride because there's a lot of red hearings that makes you think that something is what it is but it ain't really what it is and then it's also giving bonnie and clyde Twilight fan fiction addiction is what it's giving. Um, I don't know if I spoiled. I don't think so. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's end the live show there. That's all we need to know. What's up? Bye, y'all. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, no, Monty. <laughs> no. Monty tried so hard yeah. to warn me against this book. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of one of my patrons did too. Oh, no. And I was like, as I got half, I got 30% in. And I said, if it wasn't for Kayla to DNF right now, what the hell is this? Monty messaged me and was like, this is not the one. Trust me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't trust. I had already selected it, but um Yeah. Okay, so the ratings, let me pop over to the poll. I know you can't see it, but I will read it out to you. 20% of our book club members gave it five stars. 40% gave it three to four stars, 30% gave it one to two stars, and then about 10% DNF'd it. Um, I don't know if those numbers added up, but I was rounding. Yeah. So uh, that's a pretty, there's, that's a significant one to two star in DNF. 40% 40 40 of the people here, one or two stars are DNF'd. Um, so I would, I would still confidently say this is one of our most unpopular book club picks of all time. Um, but the people who loved it really loved it. Yeah. So, I was saying, Sally. <laughs> I was confused. You were confused. Yeah. I think for our um, just spoiler-free one-sentence explanation of our ratings, I, okay, I gave it, I gave it a three. And I know that might sound high to some people. But for me, I don't know what era I'm in right now, but this was a four-star romance and a two-star mystery. So that ends up at a three, mathematically. <laughs> that's the rules. So that's where it's at for me. The rules are epic. I will explain myself. Um, I ate up this romance and I think there's something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a problem. Yeah. How about you? 
um, when the description of pearl skin came up, I was ready to head out. But um, <laughs> I had my stuff packed, girl. But um, I'm anywhere between a zero to two. Oh. And we'll figure out where I'm at on that at the end. I know I do that often. Yep. I was sitting there thinking, like, do I just not rate the book? Because I really just don't want to rate it. Because I just like, it's done. It's done for me. Um, but it just, I was confused. I just didn't need that much Twilight. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Um, we're going to get right into everything because we need to talk it through. Um, something interesting is I usually make these live shows like a list of questions that I come up with. These are just basic, like favorite character, um, favorite scene, whatever. However, it's rare that you get a mystery thriller book with a discussion guide in the back. And I thought I would go ahead and respect Ashley Winstead's um, goal with us being able to discuss this book as thoroughly as she wants. So there's a reading guide in the back and I'm gonna just go through all of those questions and we're gonna answer them very seriously because apparently that's how she wanted us to read this book. I expected the questions to be, sorry, my webcam's haunted. I will fix it someday. Um, I expected the questions to lean a little like fun and goofy because to me, this was, a, this was goofy. Um, but her questions are very serious. So we're going to read it that way. I listened to audiobook via Libro. It was a hmm. free book one of these months. Oh, nice. Um, so I, it didn't say anything. It just said, this is a Harper audio. That's it. I don't know if it was Harper audio, but you know, it, they said that and that was the end of the book. They didn't <laughs> talk about no, nothing, other questions. Wait, do you not have the physical copy? No, I was waiting for you to send it. It never got sent. <laughs> when I asked you two days ago <laughs> to do this with me. <laughs> Wait, so does that mean you don't have the questions? No, but I'm here. I'm here for it. You know, I'm here for the ride. Don't worry about it. They're you know, so aggressively thorough. Oh my God. Okay. Her first question was, how does Twilight alter Ruth's worldview? And my question was, how did you feel about the Twilight references? Because I think people need the opportunity to rant about this. And so I'm going to let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. How does... um. Twilight gave her unfair expectations of the world world and what love was. And you can tell how sheltered and naive she was that she really thought that man was a vampire. She thought he was a vampire. She really? When I tell, because I, I tell Kayla before we got on here, I finished the book at 5 a.m. because I stayed up and I thought it was tomorrow. But I was, it was like three something in the morning and I was, I was in the darkness of my living room like, I got to get a snack. I had to pause the book. I had to go ahead and get a snack because I was like, did she, did she really think it was? But I'm going to tell you this as a therapist putting on the hat temporarily. When you are sheltered and you're in a small town like this and the fear of religion is real, mm -hmm. it can really alter how you think. Fear is a it's an unfortunate great motivator to stay ignorant and, and, and not not know the world. So it was set up like that for so if you know her how her father and her mother and the town treated her and then how she internalized that treatment. It made sense that she really thought that, which is why I was a little annoyed with the guy who I forgot his name. Um, when he was like, I was so hurt. I can't believe she really thought that. Mofo, you've been with her for decades now. You, you should know. You know she's unhinged. You know the girl ain't wrapped too tight up there. Um, I, I also like, I don't know, every single opinion on this book is people saying that the Twilight references were overdone. And I, I respect that opinion. And I disagree though, for myself. And maybe it's because I also didn't read Twilight growing up, um, that it didn't bother me in the way that it did other people. Um, because to me, like that was a huge intent of the book mm -hmm. was the, was the Twilight, um, whole conversation. I also didn't read the Bible growing up. So I think that I should tread lightly with um, this thought, but <clears throat> her being like equally impacted in her life by Twilight as with the Bible, I think could be seen as equally reasonable by some people. So 
imprinting, man. It's real. Yeah. I wouldn't go as far to assume like the author's intent with that, but like when you bring in the religious critique involved in here, I think um, Twilight being mentioned as often as it was, was like a key component of this story. Yeah. So, And her whole life was sheltered and guarded and her dad was a narcissist. I don't care what nobody say. The man was a narcissist and he deserved everything he got. And more. I'm mad mm -hmm. she ain't kick him and punch him over. <laughs> yeah, his name was Everett, and then she called him Ever a lot, which was a very like fantastical vampire name. So I loved it. Yeah, and it, every time I heard Ever, I was I will say I also was like a little annoyed because I don't know if y'all read that book um by Allison Noel. It was like the first series I ever read finished. Um that I ever finished and it was um it was called The Immortal Series by mm -hmm. Alison Noel and the main character is Ever and I was like here go another Ever oh. <laughs> 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 I was thinking the whole time but Ashley, I think it's because um, her whole town was very religious and they believed in this this like vampiric creature um, mm -hmm. because that was the only way they could explain away all of these deaths without, you know, condemning one of their local, um, you know, friends or family. Mm -hmm. um, and so they invented the idea of this this supernatural killer. And so she started to think maybe it's my friend ever because he was impossibly fast sometimes and he you know, was very strong and always was there to support her and his skin was glow. Awesome. And there were so many different, oh, and also she saw him drinking blood one time. Yeah, she said, that's him. That's him for sure. I did appreciate the, the history of Louisiana as a person mm -hmm. from Louisiana. I did appreciate the history of it. Um, but, and I, I definitely resonated with the section when they were talking about Ever, who was uh, hunting nutri rats. Some things are scary. Oh, well, he also, um, sorry. I was wondering how you would feel about the representation of that. And because I don't know where Ashley Winstead is from. I don't imagine. No, I don't think it's Louisiana. If it is, she must be a Louisiana city that I never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> which is a lot okay but also he what he did save her from a snake bite one time and he like so he like sucked the blood out of her to like bite. save her and so in that moment i think she was really convinced that obviously if he did that so easily he must be a vampire there were reasons okay it was she wasn't yeah. totally crazy no i mean it made sense and like the author did do a good job of like giving us scenes that when she came to that part, it made sense of why she came to that conclusion. But if you are not a shelter, you didn't grow up so sheltered, you would be like, how the hell did she even get there? And I ain't gonna lie, I'm with you, Lena. Yeah. I'm with you. I said, oh, he's about to put his fingers up in something. And then <laughs> because I was just like, this he is- was getting so into it. He was sucking for dead life. And I'm like, I wonder what that's about. I've been single for some years now. And I was just gonna, you know, figure out what's happening. <laughs> you know, I was like, I was blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I flagged the scene. I went, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, um, is somebody trying to bite me with a copper head and uh, suck it out? I mean, is that a new thing unlocked? I don't know. Maybe I'm into it. Yeah. <laughs> Not near death, and we want to get sucked on. See, this is why I don't understand why she didn't make goofy questions at the end. Why are these so serious? This book was so unserious. It was, it was a mess. Okay, her next question in the back of the book is, Ruth observed that even if you hate your family, you still inherit from them. What does she mean? Um, You know what? I can't stand you. I'm going to say it publicly because that was the quote I wanted to talk about oh. uh, because that was just really good um, because I'm like, I tell, I tell my sister all the time and, you know, we, we struggle with our mom and I tell her all the time, I go, girl, rather we like it or not, we come from her. That mm -hmm. means we have things from her that we talk about we don't like that we actually do. 
So we have to be like more reflective and not time, not being like, so like she did this, she all did all of this. And like, we have to look in the mirror as well, because whether we like it or not, we are part of it. Like I was on the phone last night talking to my dad and realized that my anger is like him. Like I, if you come to me telling me what somebody else has said, I'm not clearing up nothing. That could be also because I'm from New Orleans. You can be like, Bree said, I heard that you told somebody that um, I ate a hundred hot dogs. I'm gonna be like, and did, yeah. And even though I didn't say it, I didn't even say it, but I'm not clearing up nothing. So it's like it just made me think of like there are traits and stuff from our family that we hate that we have to recognize that is in us, and we got to break those generational curses. Um, and just and and try to be very aware of them, you know what I mean? Because it can it can be real rough out here in these streets. You thinking that you are above it, and you're not. You're not above it. You were raised by this person. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I love all of your uh, insight in the comments too. I think everybody. I think like that's why I can't give this book the lowest rating because. I think she did accomplish her goals. You know, she was trying to say certain things and obviously if we're able to answer her questions, well, also like whose questions are these? Was it the publisher? Was it her? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the editor said, add these in, baby. <laughs> um, Everett argues that pain is how you know you're alive. Why does he believe this? How is that belief dangerous throughout the book? Um, To me, a lot of people resonate with this um which i resonate as a person who've experienced a lot of pain um and i'm sure a lot of people can relate to that like pain in life i don't really want to struggle um i just i just want to be treated nicely like pain does not equal love and a lot of times when people say that pain is how you know you're alive it it equals love like you have to struggle in order to um, really be in a relationship or, or care about somebody. Um, and I think that him using pain as a way to stay alive really helped perpetuate his serial killing tendencies and his imprinting of those tendencies on um, old girl. Because I think we all have the capability of murder given the right circumstances. And he unlocked that in her. Mm -hmm. I just, I truly believe, given the right circumstances, you might off somebody. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I feel that way about my nieces and nephews. Are you scared of me? You can mess with them if you want. Looks like I'm going to prison. Mm. Inmate 3745 on this back. You got to know that. Yeah, I do think if you, you know, you grow up experiencing something, even if it's a negative experience, it's easy for you to associate that with a different emotion. So um, if it's if it's pain, if it's suffering, if it's trauma, you, you start to normalize that in a certain way and maybe even seek it out and get into destructive behavior. I think it's a pretty normal um, thing that unfortunately happens. So, yeah. And all he knew was pain. Exactly. If all you know is pain. When you get normalcy, you're like, what is that? It doesn't feel safe. No, it doesn't feel safe. I'm sure a lot of us who experience trauma will just live life and uh, somebody will tell you, you know, that's not healthy, right? And right. you've been living and you're thinking, well, that's all I know. Like if you married, if you grew up and all your parents did was fight each other and argue and there's a lot of physical abuse, you get into a relationship, you're expecting that and you meet this guy who is just soft giving you teddy bear and you're like wait wait a minute square <laughs> where's the argument you know you're looking for it um mm -hmm. what you're used to and you're not knowing that that is actually unhelpful and and traumatic absolutely um okay what did the incident with beth fort not wait fort not <laughs> But I forgot that was her last name. What would do the incident with Beth Fort not teach Ruth about her parents, her father in particular? So what happened is <clears throat> she witnessed her neighbor um, 
choking out her, their child, Beth, her friend Beth. Um, and when she brought that information to her parents, her parents didn't do what she expected, um, which was to protect that child, to show love and compassion. And instead they swept it under the rug, her preacher father in particular, um, just allowed it to happen and accepted that as fact and normal. So what did that teach Ruth about her parents? Um, that nobody is above God. Mm -hmm. it, taught her, it taught her that nobody is above God. It taught her that um, as a woman, as a young woman, your voice does not matter. You are literally collateral damage and you are the property of your father. Um, and you, and he's the head of the household and you must honor him and be obedient unto him, um, as you are unto the Lord. Um, and that's, that's like literal things. Yeah. I think it was like her first time really grappling with morality outside of what she was taught because she, and I think this was the first time she also like got the idea that people are multiple dimensional and not everybody is bad or good because the whole book or her whole life her father basically taught her there was one line that he said something about um there are some men who belong in hell who like belong in the hellfire and so um that's why like they just accept that people are terrible too because some people just belong there and you can't fix them or change them yeah um, and i guess she realized in this moment that like not only do her parents' morals no longer align with hers, but also that people can be good and bad at the same time. So she can see her father as doing great things, but also clearly this was poor morality. And yeah. she made her more accepting of like herself as having both sides. Mm -hmm. But he was very much giving like a narcissistic type of vibe. And he was really led by his ego and his decision to not help Beth's mom. Mm -hmm. That was a heartbreaking part of the book. It's like, this lady is pleading. Mm -hmm. I was really hoping that she killed such and such. But <laughs> Oh, I was hoping, I was hoping the mom killed Frank, for sure. Yeah. And I didn't get that. I'm mad about it. Um, I think we kind of covered this one, did we? What did you make of Everett's overt desire to protect Ruth in the first half of the book? Um. I well, I don't like damsel in distress, but go ahead. Right. Well, no, I was just eating up the romance because like, I, I don't know, there was something about the, I mean, there's something unhealthy about it, obviously, but like just how territorial he was of her. Yeah. Um, I just like love a jealousy trope apparently. So every time she would like talk to another yeah. man, he was like, get out of here, like dragging yeah. her away. And I was like, get him. <laughs> yeah. Listen, um, I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think my dad overcorrected on being like, you don't need no man. So like, I was just like, more ugh. like, let her live. <laughs> like, Absolutely. <laughs> I think in my personal life, I would never, ever deal with anything like that. There's something about it in books. I also just read like a uh, demon fairy kind of romance and it oh, had the same thing in it. And I was like, I'm just having a great time. Demon fairy? <laughs> it's called Throne of the Fallen. It'll be in my uh, uh, video tomorrow, my very, very long video. <laughs> anyway, Listen. I think um, his overt desire to protect her was also just rooted in him. Like, um, I'm sure there's some kind of therapisty thing here with like him, her being the only person that's safe to him. And so he becomes just like absolutely obsessed and can't imagine her been speaking to somebody else or, um, you know, he, he, she's all he has. So yeah, there I think for sure therapy thing for sure oh that's true too he viewed her as the like only innocent one and wanted to protect her like safeness i guess too which i didn't get because he know what she did right they killed somebody together <laughs> they killed somebody together and separately mm -hmm. she, she said i'm gonna go to your father's house i'm gonna stalk this man I'm going to poison this man. I'm going to watch him take his last breath. I said, girl. That happened so fast in the book, too. I was not, because it's the fact that it's not in the synopsis. Like, usually if there is some storyline like that, it'll imply something like that. Like, 
the the two are holding a secret. The two main characters did something that they're keeping, like, you know, but it didn't say anything like that. So in the f- second chapter, they murdered someone. I was like, oh, what? I'm going to tell you right now. Did I read the synopsis? <laughs> the synopsis does not depict the story at all, in my opinion, because it talks so much about the low man, the vampire figure that everyone's, and I feel like he's not even really a part of the book. Yeah. Like it was such a little bit of it. There was the moment where she was talking to her librarian friends and they looked up the cult stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then other than that, and her thinking he's a vampire. The library friend I didn't get. Like your exposure to the big city and the world and you just were like, I'm going to follow this cult. Like I didn't get, I didn't get how she was thinking and the exposure she's had. And how she was like, yeah, cult is where where I want to go. Um, but I'm glad that the word cult wasn't mentioned because I usually mm-hmm. like get out. I'm not really a cult reading girl. I got here. I don't do that for different yeah. reasons. Um, but yeah, I too am not into a cult book. So the fact that this did turn into one a little bit, I didn't love. Um, I think my biggest thing I didn't love about this is that it was like a drug ring too. Like yeah. I, I don't read books like that. I don't care about the secret underbelly doing drugs and putting boxes on boats and her sneaking well, around in the dark. No, once I saw it, as soon as they were like, oh, it was a faded, it was a scene in the book and it was like, it's a faded, uh, like emblem, if that's a word, or a sign on the boat. And it was like, it had Frank on it. I said, oh, they're doing drugs. Yeah. And I was just like, why, why, why am I? <laughs> but I will say, um, for all book clubs that I join, if I get asked up to do it, it's a book I saw and I thought it would be good by the cover only. So I don't be reading the synopsis and then I get into it and I'm like, this is. <laughs> I This is probably one of my favorite covers of the whole year too. Like I just think it's so <laughs> moody and beautiful. Yeah. And you can tell, but I will say, I felt like the pace of this book, it, I felt like we were watching um, paint dry at some points. And it could be because I wanted to DNF it so bad so many times that I was like, this book that don't end. It is a continuous book. It won't end. And then when they got in the car at the end, I said, okay. <laughs> and it kept going. And I said, Let's cut it off right here. It was too much. Yeah. Um, there is one question in here about the ending. So we'll get to that in just a second because I do want to talk about that too. Um, one of the questions is, how is the idea of community used as a weapon throughout the book? Oh, um, checks and balances. She kept trying to talk to people that she thought would be safe, that she can reveal a little bit of herself she kept talking about how like people don't know the real her and she would like to reveal a little bit of herself and every time she tried people were like but your father is everything like Mm -hmm. this and you're that and you're the father of if you're the daughter of him and like and um the fact that he censored the library and i was wondering of like what ashley would think about that as a librarian like you know him censoring the library and making sure certain books don't get in and making sure he had the sheriff in his left pocket. It just was, it was a lot. I guess you can also think about Twilight in that way of it being banned from her, not just making her want to read it more, but her like interpretation of it maybe being like kind of real is why else would they be hiding it from her? Why else would they want to keep her away from it? Unless it's something like dangerous for her to know. Yeah. So her sneakily getting to read it is like, okay, well, this maybe is the truth. Like maybe there is vampires and my dad just doesn't want me to know. Exactly. I also felt like this book in a twisted way could be a proponent to ban books in America Mm -hmm. because it's like this girl found this Twilight book and (laughs) she like, I'm going to say it again, imprinted on it. And it's like, this is me and this is my life and this is my personality and then she ended up making uh, decisions that was um, not her best interest based off of her feelings connected to this book and the Bible. So I can I can see how a parent would be like, oh, this is dangerous. You see, it's get my child in trouble. Mm-hmm. Um, 
want to read the book or continue the book. There was even that one like flashback scene where she was trying to help one of the boys like get into college. And every time she would help raise money, all of the townsfolk were like, I can't help you because your dad told me not to. Yeah. Like, he knew the power he held over oh, yeah. this community. And yeah. Community yeah. can be so great because like there's accountability and there's support, but also you can so blindly follow what everyone else is doing. Yeah. That's why I really felt like it was a cult. Cause like no one said a bad word about him or Frank, mm -hmm. and I'm like, Frank. terrible. But um, my dad used to always tell me, Bree, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Absolutely. So he was very serious about his image. And then when he told her like he didn't love her, essentially. Oh yeah. That was heartbreaking too. Um, actually, that goes great into the next question, which is Everett challenges Ruth by saying he needs to know whom she belongs to. In that moment, I was so frustrated for her because he was like, well, who do you belong to? And I felt like she felt like she had to belong to her father or Everett. And I think what Everett was trying to say is like, you need to belong to yourself. Yeah. Um, but how do you answer that question at the end of the book? Do you, who do you think she belongs to at the end of the book? Um... I don't even know. I I mean, I guess I'm stumped on that. I don't know if this is true. Because I think she belonged to Everett in a lot of ways. <laughs> I think she belongs to like her former self. I don't know if she really is who she needs to be by the end of the book. I think that we can imagine a lot of different futures for her. Um, I think at this current moment, she's still... She has a lot of ties to Everett. Yeah, I think she was also super naive at the end. She's like, mm -hmm. yeah, we're criminals. We killed people and I'm going <laughs> to go to college. <laughs> Don't be delusional. Yeah, I, I think Lulu, as, as, the, as the youth call it, right? Ain't that what the youth call it? The Lulu? Yeah, I don't even remember how old she is in the book, which was something I struggled with a little bit. Was in her 20s, mid-20s. I feel like at some points when it went like back to when I was 17, it felt like she was talking about herself from 20 years ago. And sometimes it felt like she was talking about herself a year ago. Yeah. Like that, that didn't feel very consistent to me. Yeah. The timing didn't hit. And Ashley Winstead uh, is the girl in the Trump, the true crime junkies podcast. Right. Mm -hmm. Wait, what? Isn't that her? The author of this? Yeah. No. No? I don't think so. Hold on. I think her name is Ashley, but not this Ashley. I think um, that Ashley, Ashley Flowers, she has written some other things. She mm -hmm. is in the thriller um, genre now as an author, but not this one. Oh. <laughs> I was like, here go this true crime lady. That's what I kept saying, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I do not mean that because they're both white, that they're the same. <laughs> I say that. That's not what I was trying to come from. Mm -hmm, sure. Listen, dyslexia. Okay, speaking of the ending, in your opinion, did Everett and Ruth succeed in their unlikely escape? If they were to survive, do you think they would they could create the life they were dreaming of? I think they did survive, right? Then they land on the other side of the bridge. This is why it's so ambiguous. And I I think this question being included in the discussion guide makes it very clear that the ending was intended to be ambiguous. They were in a car. They had like, for those of you who didn't read the book, good Lord, I don't know how to wrap everything up at this point. But like <laughs> they, they, <t> <laughs> they, they each killed various people. Okay. And then they were trying to plant something in this warehouse of drugs to blame someone for something um so they wouldn't get caught for their crimes and then at the very end like everett went to go kill her father because he's this terrible creature and she like kind of stopped him and she was like no don't actually kill him and he was like oh okay that was weird um yeah. but she was so easily convinced not to murder the man who's like ruined everyone's life um and then they like caught this building on fire and i think she caught her father on fire for a second something happened there, but I think he's still alive and well at the end. And then they um, run away at the end. They get in the car and they fly down the road 
and that scene went on for a while and then it says like the car was in the air off 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 the bridge because they were like flying Thelma and Louise style and yeah so they never they never landed so we don't know if they flew off the bridge or we don't know if they landed successfully and went off to live a happy life they yeah because it was like at the end also it was like oh we looked down and saw water and I'm like yeah you'll see water it's a water. <laughs> you're on a bridge idiot <laughs> and then we <laughs> <laughs> it was like, and then we looked down and saw the bridge. I'm like, oh, so they, so they hopped on it. And maybe I'm being optimistic. <laughs> That's nice. I think it was meant to be optimistic. I do think that was the goal. But I, oh, did it did this happen? I think I was reading too quick at this point because I just well, wanted to be over. Fun. That's why when you were like, he live and well, I said, damn, I thought he was dead for oh, sure. <laughs> I really was flying through it at this point. He yeah. he went to kill her father and she said no. And yeah. then there was a fire and she like did he something. Dangled, she was like, they were they were near a balcony, I think. So she was like, look. Oh, this, right. This. And he was like, give it to me. I deserve it. I need the G. And right. then she was like, um, no, you need to admit that you ain't shit. And then he was like, no, what I need to. And she just kept, they kept doing this power struggle. So then she said, oh, here is it. And he lit, he launched, he launched, he overestimated that death was upon him. And he was fighting for the air. He was fighting for his life. And he couldn't, he could grab on the number air, hopes and dreams. Cause that's all he had at the end. RIP. I do remember that now. I think I checked out at the hostage scene. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, what's happening? I said, not the air, <laughs> not the air. The air got him at the end. Okay, so we're we're happy that he died in the end. Yes, my mistake. I I don't know what my thoughts are. Um, I don't have a lot of um hope for their futures and their like relationship. Uh, I think it could get very toxic if it's not already. Um, so I imagine I imagined them dead. I guess. And maybe that's for the best because they accomplished some goals. <laughs> they uh, went out in a blaze of glory. That's what I imagine. They did. And I, I just, at the end, I was just like, how dare she write this book with Bonnie and Clyde fanfic <laughs> and, and Twilight. And it was like, and we kept getting the references to Twilight. That's why I don't understand why you were like, it wasn't enough. But you also said that you didn't, you didn't read Twilight, like probably most of us did. Um, and was just mad about it. You know what I'm saying? Mad about it. Yeah, maybe they're together and they're just killing people still. Yeah, we don't, we don't actually know about the death. We we don't know if they died. I have no idea. But then, then I didn't like how calm she was when he was like, yeah, some, when she was like, yeah, someone told me that you're killing people all over the United States, not just here. And he was like, there's bad people everywhere. And I was like, and you still about to let him come 10 feet near your JJ? Abandoned mission. This man may think you are a bad person one day and then take you out and look at you pushing up the daisies. This is what I, this is what I was wondering. Like, did she leave it open so she could write a sequel someday? Ugh. Maybe they're all vampires. I, I'm not playing with you. No. <laughs> I'm not playing with you. But for real, I was just like, I don't know. He should, and he was out in the world. He should have cut it off when she talking about I'm going to college. Where? College of in and then mate? The university of prison? Yeah, I think I think she kind of saw them as equals at the end because she had also killed somebody, which is something we didn't talk about. We find out that she actually killed his father. Um, he's the she's the one who like trapped him in the house and um poisoned him and whatever. I think that that scene didn't work for the transition to that scene didn't work for me because she said something right before that about how she was going to make herself remember. And I just, that's like a weird thing. Is she just like kept this information from us for 200 pages and then was like, yeah. I made myself remember the night that I killed his dad. I'm like, you never forgot about that. You just are trying to find an excuse for why you didn't tell us. 
Exactly. And another thing that when she kept talking about this series, and I might, I mean, this secret she had from Everett, and I may be alone on the island of one, but I really need to speak my truth. Every time she said it, I said, so girl, did he give you pregnant and then you got an abortion? Oh. Just trying to keep a secret for That's what you feel like you're going to go to hell for, girl. You know what I mean? Oh. An abortion. And I was just like, I wasn't even thinking about that. I'm glad that's not what happened because I don't like a pregnancy twist or reveal. I, I thought it was a pregnancy thing. And I was just mm. like, is this the big secret? And then I was like, would the secret, would it be her choice? Would it, like, is it causing her some mental distress? Because abortions can do that too. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. I really thought she was pregnant for the year. Because they kept saying a year, a year. And I'm like... Nine months, you know, a baby, 10 months here. That's interesting that you might interpret that moment. That was weird, too, when the bear was, like, sniffing her because she was bloody. I was like, what are we doing? We did not need that scene. <laughs> did she um, just high on coitus? Like, yes, I just got my walls broken down. And then she just closing her eyes. And then there's a bear. And I was like, <laughs> is the bear going to kill her? Now, that would be a good twist. And then she turns into a vampire. <laughs> the bear did not kill her and I was like she's still living that's crazy or maybe we could have found out that Everett was the bear <laughs> maybe he was the bear I think but like the, the yeah the weird part is when he like we find out that he has been just like killing people and he's just kind of into it and mm -hmm. then she sees them as kind of equals but like her only murder was revenge it was because she wanted to protect her friend you know there was a a good ish reason for her murder not that his aren't but like he clearly is way too into it yeah yeah i did see a comment uh stephanie you can definitely get degrees in jail you're absolutely right you're absolutely right okay my last question is do you have any book tv or movie recommendations for this one um twilight Good one. Yeah, I think <laughs> everyone can pick up Twilight. Um, it gave Twilight vibes. I'm unsure if Twilight was mentioned, but um, maybe subtly. Twilight for sure. I think also if you're if you're looking at, he was given a little bit of a, a, a Salt Bay action of a Klaus. Oh I, sure. If you were if you're into the originals or Vampire Diaries, um. The way that uh, the man, the woman, the main character, what's her name again? Uh, Ruth. Ruth. The way Ruth was acting was given a lot of legacy. Clout's daughter, um, the naivete of the world um, is what that was giving. Um, I think if you're into, uh, what is that, True Blood, it was giving Bill and so good. So I've never seen True Blood, but I've seen people mention that in relation to this. Yeah, so I feel like maybe I should. Yeah, so Suki would would give you would get you there as well. Yeah, I would say um, the originals for sure. I, it's hard to go back and watch the Vampire Diaries at this moment in time. It's a tough rewatch, um, but the originals holds up better. It's a tough rewatch, I think, because I can't get over the inappropriate relationships. And Elena is the most insufferable person I've ever seen. But when I was 18, I loved it. Yeah, I loved it. But now, every time she goes, but you can't do that. Is it, I'm like, Elena, I'm about to take you out back. Okay, We're going to have to do a quick one-two piece because you're about to, you're pissing me off. So, but yeah, for sure. Mayfly. I don't know if I ever read that. That one's, it's a new release. It's about like a serial killer woman, I think. Mm -hmm. um the cover is very scary it's mm -hmm. got a big eyeball on it i do want to read that i think um dexter definitely makes sense if you want to read something that's like more clearly um serial killer focused if you want to read a better version of this where there's actual vampires mm -hmm. and storyline is good there is a book called dark corner by brandon massey it's small town still a lot of similar vibes but done what much better 
Um, that would be a book for those of you who's like, I don't need a sequel. I'm, I can't believe I read this. This is pissing me off. So um, Dark Corner is a, is a great one. Okay. Night Mass. I didn't read that one. Okay, this is a TV show. It's a mini series. I don't know if you watched The Haunting of Hill House ever. Uh, don't try to flirt with me online, Kayla. In 4K? What are you doing? I love that show. Okay, wait, Brie. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, look me in the eyes. Midnight Mass could be your new favorite everything. Shut up. It's so good. I can't even take it. It's like my favorite. Okay, it's like my favorite thing ever. Well, um, that's it. That's so if you want, if you want the religious moments in this to like go weird as hell, um, Midnight Mass is incredible. I wonder, did I miss this? Because I've been trying to follow all of the things from that. Um, because man, the haunted house on Hill House. That was a banger. Sometimes I rewatch it just to catch if I'm seeing ghosts or stuff. <laughs> I'm like, what would I miss the first time? Because they had me in a chokehold on the black woman reveal. That mm. took me by surprise. But I, I won't spoil, but for sure. Um, also, this isn't related, but the same person who did The Haunting of Hill House and Midnight Mass, he also just did The Fall of the House of Usher, which is another miniseries. Is that that one is so incredible, too. Paula, dang, y'all trying to take over my weekend, huh? Well, it's all so good. He's so talented. And Raul Coley is my favorite actor of all time. So he's in all of these. And it's Listen, just... if I knew how to stream with my patrons, which I've been trying to figure out how to do movie night and stuff with my patrons, I would choose one of these series to watch with them. <laughs> because I did it once years ago, but I don't know how to do it anymore. So that's on me. Um, I think my other recommendations, I just grabbed a couple like thrillers that maybe would work for you if you like this one, but they don't really have romance at all. Um, but The Night Swim by Megan Golden is a good one. It's a small town. It's an investigation about like corrupt local. I was thinking people. of that one when I was reading parts of it. I really liked The Night Swim though. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't read the sequel yet. I don't know if I really want to, but it does exist. Mm -hmm. um, and then The Burning Girls by C.J. Tudor came to mind because this is about like a vicar who moves to a small town um, and she is kind of wishy-washy about her own religion, but she um, makes this really interesting impact and learns things about, again, like the weird stuff that happened before she arrived with the church. Mm. Those are my recommendations. Um, I think we should wrap it up. Thank you guys so much for being here today. Um, thank you, Brie, for being here last minute. You are so good at off-the-cuff responses. to I would be sitting here stumbling over my words if I didn't know the questions beforehand. So I'm off to you. It is, it is a gift and a curse. I will say I'm, I'm typically just not prepared, and that's how I have to live life. I have to just rip it off. Like, I officiated my friend's wedding in October. Um, and I, I felt like a celebrity because people were like, oh my God, you're so funny. I am so happy. I can't wait to see you. And I did a great job. I'm not going to lie to you. I was, <laughs> I was coming with the jokes. I was like, do you take this ball man to be with you? I, I was roasting my friends. I was, but, um, they kept being like, you know, we need to do a run through of what you're going to say. I'm like, y'all been knowing me for 10 years. You know, I don't know how to prepare shit. And, and I officiated, you know, a couple weddings. So I'm like, I never, when I get asked, I'm not coming with anything. I show up and then I, whatever I feel in the moment is what, what happens and it comes out. Okay. I just don't know how to prepare for things like that. I love it. Cause we're so painfully opposites that I think it makes her <laughs> just the perfect duo. <laughs> Actually, I do want to leave this one last question. Would you read from this author again? I'm so curious to know from everybody because I wouldn't want this one to deter everyone. Um, I read from this author twice before. In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife is one of my all-time favorite thrillers. But looking back on it, it's probably not as good as I thought it was. But I was really itching for like a little bit of romance in my thrillers. And there's a tiny bit in it. Um, and then The Last Housewife is really heavy and culty. Um, I gave it a four. I think I DNF The Last Housewife. But I do own In My Dream 
a knife was held, whatever the name of the title is. See, I know I messed up on that because I can't remember it, uh, even though you just put it in front of me. But um, I don't know. I'll see um, if, if she does no more Twilight fanfic. I'm ready for it. But I, I can't keep doing it. <laughs> some, some people are saying no. Some people are saying yes. Some people are saying it depends. Uh, she also writes romance, like kind of fluffy, fun romance books um, where the characters are as unlikable as her thrillers. So be prepared for that. Mm. Um, I, got anyway. I got a question for you because I'm okay. sure I want to know. So when are you releasing the, the books for next year? Okay, well, I've already loosely announced it, not in a video, um, but I've mentioned it briefly in various places. February is already committed to. We're reading Out There Screaming, which is the anthology edited by Jordan Peele. Um, you, know, I'm gonna, you, know it. you know I know it. <laughs> I'm going to be doing, thank you for giving me the opportunity to shout it out. Um, yeah. I'm going to be doing a live show with uh, Erin from Booked and Busy. Mm -hmm. um, because we did a short story collection for her book club and it was so fun. I didn't realize how fun a short story collection could be to discuss mm -hmm. um, because like each of us kind of took on one story at a time and it just made for a really fun back and forth. Nice. So we will be reading that together and I will announce the rest of them in January, at least for February, March and April. And no, I don't know what any of them are. <laughs> I'll figure a, it out though. I, I just want to request some more Japanese Okay. Uh, translate it. That was it. My was it. my only struggle with that is they seem to be so short. A lot of them are so short, I find. Non-Western mm -hmm. thrillers and horrors tend to be like novellas um, from yeah. what I've seen or what I have on my TBR. And I don't think novellas are the most conducive to a book club discussion. So I'm always looking for recommendations for international things for sure. Um, and I'll make sure to prioritize that for a pick next year. Because you, did you... I think you already did the two books from, um, oh my God, that's going to bother me. It's, I think one of them was like, uh, something about Vanessa, maybe. No, it's Aisa. Uh, oh my God, what is her name? So it's about this girl and she, her, um, I think her best friend marries a boy that she liked. And then Amanda, yeah. yes, yeah, yeah, from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've done hers. I, she has another book coming out next year, but it sounds like it's more like supernatural than thriller or horror. But it's one of those ones that maybe I'll read the first couple chapters and consider it because I I do quite like her. Yeah, I do like her too. I thought both of her books was a banger. Mm -hmm. I read them both. I'm trying to think if there's any other like. Have you read Vampires of El Norte? Yes. It's so hard because like I love Isabel Kanya so much, uh -huh. um, but I can't, I can't wait. Like I can't wait a couple months to read it for the book club. Like I have to have it the day it comes out. I yeah. love her stuff so much. Um, she's one that if she, as soon as she announces her next thing, I think I will uh, include her in a book club for sure, because I've given her four and a half stars twice now. Mm, nice. Nice. Okay, um, my family just walked in the door. So that's it for us today. Um, thank you everybody for being here and making time for this. And we will see you later. Bye. <laughs>